Hi there, coach and Hoka One One athlete, Sage Kande here. Today we're gonna to talk about treadmill running. I got some tips and tricks for you, as well as some physics and differences of treadmill running versus running outside. First of all, I wanna wish you a happy new year, happy start to your 2021. You know, that's kind of weird to say, but hope you're having a great new year. Let's get fit. Wow, the lighting in here is really bad. Anyway, first tip is hopefully you have a treadmill. Uh, it's a luxury item. And I've done a video on the advantages of having a treadmill versus outside running. But we'll start off, I guess, with some disadvantages because it's very boring. And when you're in a basement like I am here, a dark basement facing the corner, uh, that's my first tip is have it by a window, hopefully. When I used to go to the gym before COVID, uh, I would get on the treadmill and it would be in a window so I could at least watch people walking around in a parking lot or I could stare outside and dream of being outside, something like that. Uh, some people watch TV, I kind of get a little dizzy and we'll get into the, the details of that, of watching a screen or watching a movie, watching a TV up on a wall. Some people like the Zwift. Uh, that could be motivating too. So if having that visual stimulation could be really good and a good distraction. My tip number two, speaking of distractions, is I do listen to music though. So I got my earbuds in, uh, AirPods uh, hooked up to my iPhone, got a long playlist, some good tunes, rocking out on the tunes. And it's nice because most treadmills you could kind of just set uh, your phone there. You could set, uh, you know, your stuff on the, the tray here. So that's really key too, is being able to listen to music, jam out, have your drinks and your water bottle uh, set up there, something to eat or drink if you're doing a long session. Tip number three, tip number three, don't forget to bring a towel. Uh, I got towel -y here, and it's not just good for wiping sweat, because you probably will get hot, and we'll get into that uh, for tip four, but I use it to cover the screen. I use it to cover the screen because when we start going, uh, we see basically every second, every second ticking away there, every hundredth of a mile from my metric friends, maybe it's every meter. And it's very monotonous, it's very slow going, uh, just staring at that clock, every second ticking by. It's, you know, they say the watch treadmill with the clock, it goes slower than real time, and you're watching every hundredth of a mile, it's very monotonous, so it's better to just, just cover that stuff up. Just cover it up with a towel, listen to your music, don't look at it, don't look at it. Uh, just go, and then hopefully, the idea is that at least maybe 20 or 30 minutes will pass before I take the urge off to wipe myself down with my towel and actually look at how long I've been going on there. I can usually tell because I'm listening to music and if I go through a full album, uh, you know you've made some good progress. But if you're not distracted by that and just staring at the screen, it takes forever. Super boring. All right, my other tip and trick, and this is real key, if you're in a gym, you might have to do with what they have for cooling. Hopefully you could be in an environment that's cool. This basement's actually not as cool as it looks. Um, but you could get the AC, you could control the environment. What you probably want, and some treadmills have this built in, is a fan. You're gonna get hot. You're gonna get really hot. And, you know, this fan's not even, if I really was meaning business, I'd put it up on a chair so it would blow in at, at chest to neck level. You want a fan hitting the front, uh, providing circulation, but any sort of fan is gonna be real key. So we'll plug this bad boy in. See, that's what I'm talking about. This airflow, right? This airflow. And I'm actually, when I get into my run here, I'm actually just gonna go shirtless. I'm gonna go shirtless. I have a heart rate strap, heart rate monitor on already uh, for tracking my heart rate data. Got the Coros watch. Uh. But the other tip and trick uh, with the motivation is, yeah, I could look at my heart rate. Sometimes it syncs to your treadmill. Uh, I could look at the cadence data and I'm ignoring the distance because I have the towel covering the screen. But I have the fan blowing on me, I'm staying cool, I have a drink in the cup holder, rocking out to music, or I'm watching a computer screen Zwift, something like that, all good distractions. All right, so the second part of this talk is we're gonna talk about the differences between running on treadmill versus outdoor running. And the first noticeable difference is uh, lack of wind resistance, lack of air resistance, so to speak. So still conditions inside, Obviously, we're in one place. We're just running on the treadmill. We're not cutting through the air uh, like we would be outside. So if I'm running six minute mile pace, 12 miles an hour, and I'll put the metric conversions there for my metric friends, I'm effectively in still conditions outside. I would be feeling a 10 mile an hour uh, headwind basically that I'm creating myself because I'm cutting through the air at 10 miles an hour. Now that's in still conditions on a non-windy day outside, right? 
you go outside on a windy day and you run into a headwind, you might feel double that type of power uh, pushing against you. So on the treadmill we have still conditions, we're not generating that wind, it's part of the reason why we get so hot uh, and we need the fan because that kind of simulates what we would be feeling outside. So with the lack of the air resistance of our body cutting through the air, uh, in theory, physics wise, it is easier to run at a given set pace on the treadmill. 10 miles an hour, 6 minute mile pace on the treadmill inside uh, on a flat surface, what, 0% incline, is actually easier than running at 6 minute per mile pace flat outside because of that lack of air resistance. And the faster you get, uh, the more you notice that difference. Maybe you don't notice it as much at 10 minute mile pace or 6 uh, miles per hour, but you start really noticing it at 10, 12 miles per hour, 6 minute, uh, 5 minute mile pace. We call that the drafting effect outside. Now it might not feel easier because it gets hot on the treadmill and it kind of changes your form, but the other difference with the treadmill, of course, is that the nature of the moving belt it kind of changes your running form a little bit, right? You're not, you don't have to push off quite as hard. Uh, you still have to do the work, a lot of work output, but uh, the nature of the moving belt changes uh, your running form a bit. It might make you feel like you're worried about falling off the end of the belt. It might make you feel like you're worried about hitting your elbows or running off too far off to the side, side to side and clipping your foot. Don't want to do that, you'll fall off. Um, and so it changes our form a bit because we're constantly thinking about that. Maybe we're looking at a mirror or a reflection in the wall uh, or a reflection in the window or something like that. So it is a bit different in that regard. You're fumbling around with your music or you're fumbling around with the, the hand controls. It could change your form a bit and it can make it so it actually doesn't feel easier. However, the number one thing people do is they will change the incline to make it more equivalent to outdoor running. So a lot of uh, formulas and algorithms will say that, you know, if you put the treadmill up at a 1% gradient, 1% incline, that will make it more equal to outdoor running pace. And, you know, the physics of changing it to an uphill grade also changes your running form a little bit. But the great thing about the treadmill is you can control the pace, you can control the environment. And actually that's one more final factor in the differences is that if you're running at a set pace, you're locked into this steady pace, whereas outside you might not be watching your GPS watch all the time and locking in specifically to a certain pace, a uh, dead steady pace, right? And it kind of gets stressful because if you're locked in at this certain pace, you feel like maybe your heart rate starts going up a little bit or drifting or you start feeling some muscle tightness, you can't change it on the fly as much, whereas outdoor, when you don't know what pace you're running exactly, you're not holding a uniform steady pace as much. So it could be a double-edged sword with that as well. All right, so final note I wanted to edit in, add in here is not all treadmills are created equal and not all treadmills are accurate. If your treadmills have been calibrated or the belt's slipping uh, or the display's wrong, it could be reading a totally weird distance or totally weird speed that's not accurate. Uh, your watch will not sync up necessarily with the correct distance either. You can wear a foot pod uh, people have different foot pod devices, that's going to be more accurate. It's measuring your stride rate as well as your stride length. Uh, and that could estimate distance, but don't always take the numbers that your treadmill spits out at you, especially if it's an old model. Uh, you have to consider that they might there might be some error in the treadmill the device. So don't always say, oh, I'm not running as fast as I think I was, because it could be that your treadmill is just not accurate. Finally, check out my video on tips and tricks uh, for why treadmill running might actually be better than outdoor running and how it's a really useful training tool, as boring as it is, uh, because of all these things as well as getting in a lot of vertical gain, setting the incline up, practicing uphill running form, uphill running, doing form analysis with video cameras, getting at, at perfect angles as you're stationary on the treadmill, testing out new shoes without having to risk going too far away from your home in the comfort of your home. Check that video out as well as subscribe on here uh, for the 200,000 subscriber prize giveaway. We, guys, we did it. Finally, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Uh, after 12 years of making running related content here on the YouTube, we get 200,000 subscribers heading into this new year. I'm gonna do my next video will be an announcement uh, of how to enter the prize, but you gotta subscribe on here. Follow me on the Instagram, at Sage Canada. Thank you, thanks to the title sponsor, Hoka One One, for keeping the dream alive. Thanks to the Patreon supporters for making this channel really possible. Onwards and upwards, 2021. Hope you're doing well, and stay tuned for more via 2Max Productions.